Hello everyone, Reginald Scott here. Welcome to the video. Great to see you all again if you are a returning viewer and if you are not a returning viewer, also welcome. And I do hope you can like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, leave a comment, share with a friend, all that good stuff. As usual, I will endeavor to reply to all the comments on my channel, um, leaving no stone unturned if I can help it. One thing I did notice um, is I'm nearly at 6,000 subscribers now. I'm well on the way to 6,000. And yet often my videos only get about 1,000 views. So that means four to 5,000 of you are not getting notified of the videos, I guess. Um, so if you have forgotten to hit that bell notification so it can let you know when a new video is published, please do so and you can join the party. Right, today I want to show you my birthday present to myself. Uh, this year I bought myself something luxurious for my cycling kit and I, it, it has recently arrived and I I'm really looking forward to showing you, to be honest with you. I'm very excited about it. But before I do, a little bit of context. So this pump here, I've had for absolutely donkey's years. Um, it was the pump I used to take with me on my daily commute in the UK. It's a decent, sturdy mini pump from Topeak. Um, and yeah, it's got a nice aluminium barrel on it. Good, big, chunky plastic grips. This one actually pumps on the pull, not the push. So that's where the pump comes. Um, and yeah, it's got a decent head on it. And it, this thing has been absolutely fantastic. I've had it for, as I say, absolutely donkey's years, decades even. Um, and I now use it in my shop as a little handy pump when I'm fitting customers' tires and stuff. But I no longer ride with this pump because I have something smaller, lighter, more compact. So let me just show you the weight of this one to get context. As I say, this pump here is considered a mini pump, okay? It even says mini on it, I think, somewhere there. Uh, the writing has worn away quite significantly, but here we go. This is what they consider a mini pump, 150 grams. So, you know, not bad, not as, but perhaps as heavy as a shop pump or a floor pump or a, an entire frame pump, but still a little bit chunky. Let's move that to the side for the moment and show you what I've been using also for donkey's years, um, but maybe a few less donkeys than this. This is also a Topeak pump, and this is a micro pump from Topeak. Um, you can see it's considerably smaller than the, uh, the mini pump. Obviously it has less capacity and it's much more simple. This one doesn't have a lever on it like this one. Um, you just push and hold onto the valve. And of course, this pumps on the the uh, pressing action like that. And uh, yeah, it's very small and it's very light. It was my belief for a long time that this was the lightest pump you could get. Um, at least that's what I thought because I couldn't see any online or I didn't notice any online that were lighter. This one comes in at 55 grams. Um, but as I say, for my birthday this year, I was, you know, Googling away and I came across something I'd never heard of. And it has remained unheard of for most people, I think, for absolutely years. Um, I think they've been selling this thing for like 11 years now or something. And as I say, I've never seen anybody with one. I've never heard of it. I've never seen a YouTube video on it, which I find really odd because it's supposed to be the world's lightest pump. Um, let me show you. This is the iPump Micro. Look at this thing. It is tiny. There are people vaping right now. It kind of it does kind of look like a vape, doesn't it? Um, micro pump, mini pump. <laughs> it's it's pretty incredible really um firstly firstly about this i mean talking about capacity i'm going to do a demonstration in this video showing you which one pumps faster and which one is, is more practical but what's interesting about this topeak is uh i think i can unscrew this body can i not i did before ah here we go so if you unscrew this body what you find out is that this pump is not actually made of carbon fiber. This one is made of aluminium clad 
in a carbon fiber shell. So if I unscrew the head here, which has quite a few threads on it, you can see this is just a carbon fiber shell that weighs an additional eight grams. This is actually the barrel or the pumping uh, chamber for the pump, right? Let me see how thick this is. Um, so this one comes in at, what's that? Uh, well, like 18 millimeters? Yeah, or just, just a bit less than 18 mil. What's the inner diameter? That is uh, 16 mil in a diameter and uh, about 18 external. Now I can't measure this on the inner diameter because I believe it's glued together with these aluminum end caps. But this barrel here, I have to assume how thick it is. I don't, I can't really tell how thick it is um, without drilling holes in it, which I'm not gonna do because this is quite expensive. Um, but this barrel is actually the pumping chamber. There is no aluminum um, chamber on this clad in carbon. The carbon tube is the chamber. And this one comes in at nearly 19 millimeters, 18 and a half. So this actually has got a wider chamber than the toe peak. It is a little bit shorter. As you can see, the chamber is a bit shorter. I mean, that there's nothing there. And then obviously you've got the the length of the head there that goes in. So actually there's, there's not much difference between the two. They have a very similar length chamber. So you actually might get more air capacity from this smaller pump than this toe peak one, which is kind of amazing really. So toe peak was 55 grams. Um, this eye pump, as I say, claims to be 21 grams. Sometimes it says 21. Sometimes it says the time of day. Let's try that again. 22 right now. It fluctuates. There we go. <laughs> I got it to say 21. So it's fluctuating. So it's barely 22. Um, here is the leaflet that I got with this eye pump. Um, now, these things are made in Japan. The, the guy who makes them is not Japanese. I believe he's European of some kind. Um, I haven't checked into his background, but he's got a European accent. Uh, can't quite place it, uh, but he's not Japanese. But he lives in Japan and he makes these eye pump products. So I decided to do my due diligence and actually research the owner of the company, a gentleman by the name of Morris Ostro. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And he was actually born in Germany, so I was right, he is European. However, he grew up in Israel, which might account for why I couldn't quite place his accent. Um, he then moved to Canada, where he obviously had a passion for the pastime martial art of judo, uh, because he ended up on the national team, Canadian national team for judo. And then he eventually moved to Japan, where he has a family, and he's an inventor, he's a, an engineer and he builds all these fascinating eye pump products. So go check out his website, um, eye pump, just type it in Google, you'll find it. And uh, go check out his really interesting products. What a fascinating character the man is. Anyway, back to the video. Now this is the simplest one he makes. He makes a floor pump, which is a little bit bigger than this. Um, he makes this pump with an additional pumping guard on it, where you can get more of a grip on the pump. Um, which is 26 grams, I think it is, or 28 grams, something around there. And he makes this one, which is the absolutely most cut down, lightest possible pump you can get. And so, of course, with my addiction to everything lightweight, I had to get this pump. Let's see what he says in his pamphlet. So there we are, 21 grams with two exclamation marks to let you know he's serious. Um, the lightest air pump ever, I believe that is the case. Um, I don't know what he means by 100% efficiency. I don't see how anything can be 100% efficient. And then this claim of being able to pump to 150 PSI. We are going to test that in this video. Let's just say you may be disappointed. I need to clarify something here. Slight misunderstanding on my part. I do not believe the pamphlet is claiming that you can pump to 150 PSI, but simply that the chamber will withhold pressure up to 150 
PSI, meaning that anything above that it is not rated to. But this is not a claim that it can actually pump that high, as far as I understand it, having looked into it further about that <laughs> if you really believe that that can pump to 150 psi full carbon body well yes apart from the aluminium end caps and as i say only 21 grams um, and it gives us some more mm, information here now how does this work uh, how does it um how does it work i know not my lead well Here's your, your pumping thing here for this Topi one, okay? Your handle and your pumping chamber. The handle for this is these two fat rubber O-rings that go around this aluminium head. That's the pump. So what you do is you, you're supposed to squeeze these two rubber rings at the top and then push like that. That is your pumping action here. Um, when this came, it wasn't particularly well lubricated. It felt a little bit stiff. I have put wax on here, might be accounting for why the um, the weight, there was a slight weight difference perhaps uh, with it now, because it's been well waxed. Um, and I find that that's really helping with the pumpy action. They do recommend on their website only to use silicon um, lubricants down inside the actual chamber, uh, but I don't have any silicon on me right now. So as I say, I just waxed this rod here, this carbon fiber shaft. Um, and then how do you attach it to your bike? Because that would be really awkward, right? Screwing that down onto your valve. This end here is threaded and you do have a, a little rubber O-ring there as well, um, just to help create a nice seal on the valve core. Well, it has a yellow tong that pokes out. So this yellow tong is a tiny little tube. Let's see how tiny it is actually. I think it's about four mil. Yep, four millimeters in diameter. This tiny little four millimeter polyurethane tube is the hose for this pump. So you screw down the hose onto your valve and then off you go, pumping away. Absolutely incredible. Very tiny design. Now the advantages of something like this are obvious to me. Extremely lightweight. I can, I can barely feel it in my hand, actually, if I'm, if I'm perfectly honest. It's difficult to tell it's even there at 21 grams. It is so light. Um, and what I really like about this, as opposed to my current Topeak one, is that hose. That makes things so much more convenient, especially with the, the valves, uh, valves that I'm using on my current wheel set. I'm using the TPU tubes. I'm using plastic uh, valves and the plastic valves they don't appreciate being bent very much in fact you can snap them off if you bend them too far so having a, a flexible tube to hook onto them is brilliant it really means i can pump quite hard and not have to worry about bending the valves whereas this thing because it requires being um, pushed down directly onto the valve and with every pump that you do um, you are putting pressure on those valves it's not always the best solution um, and it is a bit of a risk really that you could while you're pumping you see my hands moving I could be bending the valve and um, makes life very awkward so superior in the sense that we have this tube here um, which is just well absolutely fantastic it's going to really make life a lot more uh, simple for me I do prefer a mini pump. I know a lot of people like CO2 gas. Um, CO2 gas pumps can be incredibly light, but then you have to carry the vials of CO2, the little cylinders of CO2. Um, and you're only limited to however many cylinders you require or you decide to carry. If it goes wrong, you waste money every time you burn through a cylinder. Um, it's you know gonna cost you five to eight dollars depending on how much they cost where you live. It's just a pain in the backside. So I always go for a mini pump and this thing, I don't know. I just I just have to have the lightest kit. Durability wise, it seems pretty durable. And um, these things have been dropped off buildings uh, again by the, the guy who makes them and they survive. They're very simple. There's not really much to break. From what I can gather, all that's inside here is an empty chamber. You've got your little diaphragm here that moves up and down on the plunger. Um, these two aluminium caps are 
exactly what they look like. They're just glued on caps onto this carbon tube. Um, and then on top of this hollow carbon tube here, you have the, the polyurethane tube. Um, there's obviously a reduction in sizing here, something to, to keep the tube on the end. And then this aluminium is somehow bonded onto this tube as well. I can't see how that's done. Maybe it's just glued in there. Don't know, but it seems fairly sturdy. The machining on this is quite exquisite, really. You can see it's got a step in it there, two steps. And this lovely aluminium head is machined beautifully as well. Um, made in Japan, of course. So, you know, the Japanese, they, they don't do things by halves, do they? If he has indeed Japanese workers in his factory, I'm sure they are very, very careful with this. It's very high quality. Um, it feels well built. I actually thought that these rubber things would come off as well while I was pumping, but they do not. I don't know whether they're glued on here or whether they're just friction fit and held in by these little um, spacers here or these little ridges. I think they might just be held in by ridges, but they do not seem to want to move or come off. So that's very reassuring. Again, you can see the machining here is very nice. With regards to heat dissipation as well, you'll see this in the testing about to happen, but this one actually um, gets less hot or when it does get hot, it dissipates the heat much faster than this one. This one has a full aluminium body, so it retains a lot of heat. This, because all carbon fiber, it drops the heat really quick. So even though you're pumping away quite vigorously, um, it, it gets warm, but it doesn't get hot. So that's also very impressive as well. So there you go. That is my birthday present to myself. Now, this thing set me back 80 US dollars. Uh, I will have to double check the price of this one. I'll probably post it on the screen. This was expensive but it wasn't anywhere near 80 US dollars as far as I'm aware. It's a lot of money for a bicycle pump, nearly a hundred bucks, I suppose, if you look at it like that. But when you're paying for the best, it's not bad really when you think about it. It feels special. Um, even the carbon fiber they've used is really nice. Like the patterning on it is pretty. It came with a very high polish. It's just a well-made, well-presented, clever little item okay folks so we're going to do a bit of a pumping test now i've got my front wheel off my bike here which i have flattened the tire on um just by depressing the valve this is a 23 millimeter gp5000 tire and the valve is a ride now tpu tube 23 no 24 gram uh, tpu tube so one of the lighter of the tpu tubes um and usually i would ride this roughly around 100 psi a bit less than that around 90 something uh 96 97 psi i'd be happy at the side of the road to get like 70 75 psi back into a tire with a mini pump like this so i'd be interested to see if that's possible but the first test that i'm going to do is time so i'm going to set the clock on my phone here for three minutes and then I'm going to pump away like crazy for three minutes with both the toe peak and then after that with the eye pump. And we're going to check the amount of pressure that we get with this here digital readout on this electric pump. Uh, so let's see what we can do with regards to pumping for three minutes with the toe peak pump first. Right. So uh, I'm going to start with the pump set up both for the eye pump and for the toe peak, uh, just so we're only getting the pumping time rather than the setup time. Obviously the setup for the eye pump is going to be longer because you have to thread it on the toe peak you just push on with your hand. On your marks, get set, go. And already trapped my skin with the toe peak. Ouch. <laughs> time. Okay, folks, wow, I'm sweating. Um, that was really awkward. I trapped my skin with this pump on the very first stroke, which is something I don't normally do. Um, and today, wow, that was hard work. 
Um, most of it was just trying to control where the wheel is going, get a good grip on it. My thumb's getting tired from holding down the tire and the wheel. It's not a particularly enjoyable pumping experience with this thing. Um, it's got pretty hot. Right, let's see how much pressure we actually have in this thing. All right, I'm going to hit go and see what we get. Right, so in three minutes, roughly around 54 PSI in the tire. It feels pretty, pretty good, to be honest with you. Um, that would be more than enough to ride home on. Um, you're not going to win any races on that, but <laughs> 54 is still pretty good. Okay. So three minutes, you get about 54 in there. Let's see if we can beat 54 with the eye pump. So the eye pump, as I said before, it threads on with this bendy tube. So like I say, in theory, it should be better. Huh. There's a little O-ring you have to get by first. There we go. It's nice and tight on there. And your marks, get set, go. <laughs> I think I'm reaching the limit uh, of what is possible with this pump. Okay. Whew. I am again sweating. The pump is not too hot, actually. Um, it's not any hotter than the, the tow peak, and uh, it cooled down very quickly. That was getting really hard to pump with. I was basically at the limit of what was possible. I'm going to see if I can get any more air in it if I pump for longer in a second. 64. But basically, there's about 63 PSI in there. So 10 PSI more than the, the toe peak. Now, obviously, I didn't pump constantly with both of these pumps. But 60-odd PSI, that is that's pretty good. I mean, that's... Uh, that's enough to get home for sure. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get more in it. I'm going to keep pumping and see how I do. I was really reaching the limit of what was possible there. I want to try and get it to 70 PSI if possible. 75 would be amazing. I don't think I'm going to hit 75. Okay, guys, I pumped for another three minutes. This red area here and this red area here on my hand is uh, what I did to my hands. Uh, after another three minutes, it was getting to the stage where it was literally impossible for me to get any more air in. This finger is where you have to kind of hold onto the pump here. And I'm just getting too tired. I tried to use other fingers and or a full grip, but it doesn't work. In order to get it to pump, you have to push it all the way down. Um, so yeah, I was just, my hands were just too tired after that. I think I've got the strength to get more in. It's just, like I say, the fingers and the hands have had enough. So let's see what we've got in there now. It said 70 briefly there. Yeah. Don't know what's happening with my pump, but I think I hit around 70 PSI on the first go. Let's just check the video footage and confirm that. So there we go, folks. The iPump Micro, the world's lightest bicycle pump and probably one of the world's smallest bicycle pumps as well. Absolutely fantastic. Really nice product. Feels beautifully made. Feels special. A um, little bit pricey, but I think worth the money for what you get, which is something quite unique and quite special. Never seen one of these on the road before. Never, know, never known anyone to own one. Um, so that's nice as well. And, you know, you can't, in my opinion, you can't beat a bit of lightweight tech, a bit of lightweight jewelry. 
Um, and more practical than my previous lightweight pump, as well as being lighter and smaller. Just a brilliant all-round product, in my opinion. Um, so there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, of course, please leave them below. I will get back to you. And as always, folks, whatever you're riding, wherever you're riding, please do stay safe, and I hopefully will see you in the next video.